Bonjour à tous, hey everybody. So today is a Friday, which means that I get up at 6 a.m. Hate it, but I love my ancient history class. But at what cost? I swear, I'm not awake for half of it, more than half of it, but it's really interesting because we're talking about the social classes of the ancient Greek world and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Like, in Sparta, we talked about, um, well, I only know the French terms for these things now. This is going to be weird when I go back to the U.S. because I have no idea how we, we would say this. Ooh, oh well. There are these people called the Periac, and they were in between actual citizens, which were called the Homoeoi, and the uh, Hilot, Hilotes. However you say it, it's Hilot in French, so Hilot are the slaves, Homoeoi are the actual citizens of Sparta that just decreased and decreased, decreased until the third century, and it just got worse from there. Because Sparta kind of just after the Peloponnesian War, so but the Peliac were in between them. They were free, and they were land owning, but were not allowed to uh, participate in Spartan politics, which is interesting because usually the three requirements to be able to participate in politics of a city-state in ancient Greece is one, you're a dude. Number two, you own land. Number three, you're a free man. They fit all of those and yet we're not allowed to participate. Why? Because the land they owned was inferior. The homoioi had the land that was fertile, that where they could grow wonderful things. And then there were the less fertile areas where the Periac lived, where they grew olive trees and uh, grapes. They also mined. And because this work was beneath the usual farming and what was accepted, they were not allowed to participate in politics, like at all, which I think is fascinating. And also bear in mind, the revol revolts done by the Peliac were really, really few and far between. Like, he cited two in today's lecture. And I'm sitting here like, really? That's it? Because the Ilut, the slaves, revolted like nobody's business. <laughs> it was really interesting. Um, but the reason they didn't revolt as much is because is that uh, they were free. They were free and they owned land and they could live in their families. They had basically everything they needed, they just had no control of their government. So it's interesting their um, priorities because I guess as an American we think of taking away someone's rights the worst thing you could possibly do. Uh, especially political participation because we're so adamant about it um, but uh, they more valued their freedom because the other option was slavery which would suck really badly and yeah the treatment of the Ilot was horrible completely completely horrible this is turning into an ancient Greek lecture I'm sorry <laughs> I love this stuff. I love learning about the different societies. Love it, love it, love it. Because Sparta and Athens were just like psh, rivals. And Athens, it could be argued that they were a little better. But in some cases they were better, in some cases they weren't. Um, they were just structured in a very different way. Um, Athens had a little bit of trouble with hypocrisy because they claim to be a total democracy and everyone knows them for their democracy. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you who participated in that democracy. Uh, the aristocracy. And if you had a penis. 
Doesn't sound like much of a democracy to me, but you know. I mean, to be able to participate in politics, you had to be male, you had to own land, and you had to be free. All of Greece, that's the standard, like I said. But, thing is, if you have your fields to work, you ain't going to the forum all day. If you have to take care of your own household and you have your own work in a uh, statuary or in the agora selling things or you're a fisherman or something, when are you going to go to the forum to discuss new laws? And that is how the aristocracy managed to have the lower classes not participate in government. It was absolutely a choice, but you know, if you wanted to eat and uh, stay alive, you had to work. But if you were the aristocracy, you were educated, number one. Number two, you already had money to eat. Number three, your business was paperwork. You see the little discrepancies there? Yeah, yeah. Democracy. Hmm, fun. <laughs> I love breaking these little ideas apart. I love it, love it, love it. Which is why I took this class. And today, my friend Catherine did her expose and her French was complimented in front of the entire class. Like, I was so proud of her. Because she got up and analyzed a text from... Okay, so here's how this works. We get a text. We have to analyze it and bring about the historical context. That's the idea of the presentation. But the text is taken from ancient Greek to English to French. Is that the best way to translate things? Absolutely not. <laughs> You'd think there'd be somebody translating ancient Greek directly into French, but uh, more commonly it's the English translated into French, which kind of intrigues me. So I would be able to find my text in English, be able to read it, and say, okay, here we go. <laughs> which is fantastic to hear mine, because it's in three weeks, and I'm not ready. <sighs> but it's okay. It's all good. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. Two weeks, I have my Greco-Roman expose on ancient Vienna, and analyzing it. <laughs> its use in the Gallo-Roman Empire, because that is in the... I forget the region. Crap. This is a great indication on how that presentation is going to go. Well, I am going to stop this. I am going to give myself a nice Friday night of movies and fun. Disney movies and fun, because I have been working non-stop. I had, I think I've had four midterms in these two weeks, and writing assignments on top of that and a vocab quiz today, I'm done. I ain't gonna work. I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna watch my Disney movies and be happy, and you guys should find a way to be happy too, just because hey, treat yourself. It's midterm-ish season, right? Oh my god, it's midterms already. It's March. What is this? This is my 67th video on YouTube. I'm not going to have an existential crisis tonight. I'm not going to do it. I've made over 60 videos, and I'm going to just not think about the implication of what that means that I've done with this one life I have. Nope, not going to do it. I'm going to go and watch Big Hero 6. I'm going to be a happy person. I will probably watch Zootopia afterwards, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Au revoir. Bye.